Hello there Wargamers and welcome to the mess that is my room. Um, here you'll see probably about 3,000 points worth of Blood Ravens just casually sat on the side. I recently took a whole load of France, took a couple of foams out full of paints and stuff for me to do and I really just haven't got around to putting stuff away. Um, you're probably wondering why am I showing you the mess that is my room and my little hovel is the way of describing it. Uh, right, I got from people across Facebook and a couple of people on uh, on the comments section asking for a detailed analysis of Scumblitz uh, and a closer up look of him. So, um, so yeah, here we go. You know, for those of you who are interested, um, this is Scumblitz. So here we are, the uh, the absolute monstrosity that is. Boss Scumblitz. Um, so, a little background history on why he is like he is. Well, if I'm honest, the reason he's on the bike, what counts as a bike in and of itself, is bikes are the way forward for war bosses, if I'm honest. You need the toughness 6 with so much strength 10 and ignores cover out there. You need to be able to just tank the wounds and not drop instantly from them. And it makes them that much more resilient in challenges, especially with Chaos, where they get their uh, their boons for killing characters. You know, it just makes them that a little bit harder for them to kill. Um, so, yeah, why has he got a massive great power claw? We'll get into that when I get to the power claw. Um, originally, he started out as a design for Glasbag's Blitz bike. Well, Scumbits is War Chariot, but you get the idea. Uh, eventually, I ended up giving him the Lucky Sticks, which I'll show you my take on the Lucky Sticks in a bit. Uh, but yeah, it sort of started as a design for that, and even when I changed it to the Lucky Sticks, I sort of stuck with the design I came up with for him, because, well, it was just such, as you can see, an epic design. I decided that I just, I, I had to I had to bring him to life. Um, so yeah, let's look at him. Right off the bat, obviously we've got an Imperial Knight base, just because it was the only thing big enough for what I had planned. Um... So we'll start with the uh, the actual base of the chariot itself, which is the Ogre Kingdom Iron Blaster uh, door, is the honest answer. It, 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 it's a door that an ogre sits on and fires off of. Uh, originally I was going to use the ogre from the Iron Blaster for Scumblitz himself. Unfortunately he didn't turn out to be big enough. I thought he was going to be bigger than he was. He didn't turn out to be big enough for what I was planning. Um, so yeah. So, as a result, I ended up using a Minotaur's, uh, a, a Minotaur for Scumblitz. Uh, and as you can see, he's much more size appropriate for the whole thing. Obviously, we have truck wheels, nothing fancy there, just, you know, pretty bog standard. The, uh, the boss pole at the back is from uh, the Minotaur's kit as well. Uh, the barrel here is from the Minotaur's. Uh, it's a barrel full of lucky st uh, stick bombs. Uh, the lucky sticks, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, my take on it is that Scumblitz just goes down throwing stick bombs out like Little Red Riding Hood does daisies as she skips to grandma's. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. So that, that I mean, that's my take on the lucky sticks. And here we got a thieving little grot trying to trying to steal one of the lucky sticks. Clearly, it's the root of the, of Scumblitz's power. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we'll get to the power claw in a bit. Obviously, we got the chariot needs to be pulled, so we've got his attack squig horses. Um, so yeah, so obviously we got eight squigs, uh, all a variety of them, including the one from um, you can't really see him very well, uh, Gruck Face Ripper. Uh, I went for him because I thought he was a rather angry, angry-looking squig, and I thought, well, I'm sorry, but a squig in that pose, I've got to have him trying to bite some it. So I thought. Or well, maybe if I put a uh, put something on the back end of one of the uh, one of the other squigs that would irritate him, like say a set of bells from the flagellant kit, um, you know that that would give me um, something to do. Yeah, so, so in, and then on, onto his uh, onto his gunner. First, we'll do his gunner. So as you can see here, he's got a little grot gunner. Now that my take on that is obviously grot's a ballistic skill three, as opposed to your orc ballistic skill two. And I thought, well, if I ever use him as a git finder, if I ever if I ever give him a git finder, having a grot gunner would be um, a good way of sort of explaining that one through. You know, that's why he's that a little more accurate. On to the guns. The guns were the fun part. Um, 
I basically got a pair of Hades Auto Cannons from a friend of. He was making a Mauler Fiend, obviously, he doesn't need the Hades Auto Cannons, so he gave me the shooty part of it, and there you go, there's the Hades Auto Cannons underneath. With the. And I've, I've had a few people ask about these, not sure what they are. For those of you Astra Militarum players out there, guard players, these are your, uh, these are your Punisher Gatlers. Um, you know, I mean, they're, they're between them. They make a fantastic, huge set of weapons, you know. And the reason, I, again, the reason I did this is because originally it was designed for Gazblag's Blitz Bike, uh, who has Assault 3, Strength 6, AP 3, I believe it's Strength 6, anyway. Um, weapons, as opposed to these bog standard Assault, 5, Assault 3, Strength 5, AP 5. Uh, so I thought, well, let's give them nice big guns. Um, but I thought, well, I don't really want just want one set, so I thought I wanted the Hades Auto Can and the Punisher together. But you can't have... You can't only have one of each, because they're twin-linked after all. And as Land Raiders and Hurricane Bolters and anything else tell us, if you if you slap two weapons together, it makes them twin-linked. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty straightforward kit for the rest of them. The head is from the Black Orcs kit. Uh, the shoulder pads are also off the Maul of Fiend 14 kit, which my friend... Gave me on top of it. I thought it just made a nice, nice shoulder pad and just sort of gave him, you know, just sort of, because obviously bikes give him a four plus armor save. I thought, well, it made that heavy armor look just that little bit more dramatic, just, you know, just sort of made it more obvious and obviously, you know, makes him look more imposing. And then onto the bit we all know you're waiting for the power claw. Um, yeah, the power claw is off a soul grinder. Um, now, I know where you're thinking, what on earth could give you the inspiration or madness and stupidity to give him a Soul Grinder Power Claw? Well, GW used to run in, uh, events called Invasion, which were uh, tournament one-day tournaments between different Games Workshop stores. Um, uh, for instance, we used to do, when, when, when they ran it, it used to be Oxford, Newbury... Reading and one or two others. I can't for the life of me remember anymore. Maybe limit, maybe Limit and Spire. I'm not sure on that one. Um, and yeah, basically, um, it used to be paired, a uh, paired thing. So you used to go. It was either I think it was 600 points a piece uh, per player. And yeah, you used to go with your army and you used to play against other pairs from other stores. And um, yeah, myself and Steve, who you might have seen a little bit on the channel, I can't remember if I've got him on video yet, if not you'll see him a lot coming up, uh, we took Orcs and Orcs, and this was just not long after I'd started Orcs with Boss Scumblitz, and we took the um, the Orc Apocalypse. Uh, <laughs> was it the Wild Apocalypse? One of the two, can't remember which one it was, I think it was the Orc Apocalypse. And um, and yeah, and you play three games basically. You have one game lunch, and then two games after lunch. Uh, all three of our opponents, uh, all three of our games that day were a lot of fun. The first one was against Blood Angels and uh, lots of Wraith. Uh, that was an enjoyable game. Um, our second game was Eldar and Marines with one. I feel no shame in saying this because he probably won't see it. Less than sporting, and in fact, rather miserable player. And our third game was against someone that Steve had gone had lost to previously with his last partner, and my partner the, the time before that was, and my partner and I lost to him in fact in the final game, um, and it was against Blood Angels and Chaos Demons, and they had a bare bones captain with a five man unit of scouts. And the Blood Angel said this is a five man assault unit in a drop pod rather than the jump packs. Obviously, it's a free switch. And a Storm Raven uh, with no fanciful upgrades at all. But you know, at 200 points base, you don't really need fanciful upgrades. And I think the Aegis Defense Line might, yeah, the Aegis Defense Line with the quad gun was in his list as well. And then the Demons had um, a Herald. Bare Bones Herald, I believe it was. Two units of three Nurglings. Uh, and three Soul Grinders with Harvester Cannons. And, um, yeah, and we were playing a game of Purge the Alien. Uh, Steve and I were running... Steve had his big mech with a custom force field and a burner. Um, and he had a unit of 20 Grots. Um, 
he had two units of boys and I think like six looters just because we have spare points floating around. I had Scumblitz on foot with heavy armour, power claw boss pile, cyborg body because it was good back in those days. Uh, two units of 20 boys with big shooters, power claw boss pile, knob, heavy armour because I could back then. Actually were 21 man units because of the knob. And I had a Daka jet as well with the extra shooter and the extra super shooter and the um, whatever the upgrade is that makes it a uh, fly boss or whatever it is that makes him gives him straight from run. Um, so uh, so yeah, and basically uh, turn two, our opponents charge one of the soul grinders into Steve's Gretchen, getting him first blood and the first kill point. But rather stupidly, it was the only thing stopping our um, our power claws from charging, which is the only real thing we had that could hurt it properly. And uh, yeah, in the first two games, Scumblitz had rather annoyingly failed to get into combat over and over again, <laughs> which did not help me. Um, yeah, I, I, char I must have charged five or six times between the two games, and he just could not make it into combat. And then in the third game, he went on to charge a Soul Grinder. The Soul Grinder killed a couple of my boys in the process of him swinging first. Uh, the knob of the Power Claw didn't actually do anything to him because he made his invulnerable saves. Scumblitz proceeded to rip both of his weapons off. Got two weapon destroyed results. Uh, didn't destroy him, however. And then the ultimate injury to insult there was that in the next round of combat in our opponent's turn... Um, the Soul Grinder did two wounds to me, and I made both of my six-up armor saves. Seeing as you no longer had a, uh, a close combat weapon, a, a, an AP value at all. So I thought I'd been planning for ages to give him a Soul Grinder Claw. Uh, the problem was, a regular war boss just isn't big enough, you know? I mean, it's not quite the right scale, but the Mega Knobs aren't far off the same size as an heavy armored war boss. And, you know, let's just... Just, just compare the two of them, obviously. That that power claw would be far too big on him. And it was sort of... I, I'd always planned to give it to him, like I say. And the fact that I ended up having to give him a Minotaur body just sort of... Well, it just sort of fell into place. And, yeah, and it was a Nurgle-themed Nurgle, Nurgle -themed, uh, Soul Grinder, I should clarify. Um, so, yeah, here you are. Death Guard. Pauldrons for the uh, for the Mortal Fiends. Death Guard... Um, Power Claw off the Defiler. Uh, well, it's off the Soul Grinder race. The same same kit, pretty much, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, so, you know, <laughs> there's not really much more to it. I mean, it's pretty pretty straightforward, if I'm honest. You know, I mean, it, it looks rather impressive. There are... There's about 15 to 20 kits involved in this, um, all told, when you include all the little things like this off the boys and... Um, and the the Grot Gunner out the the Daka Jet kit and like the the Black Horse helmet and things like that. Um, yeah, I mean, I hope this is sufficient enough for those of you who um, who wanted a closer look at Scumblitz. And you know, I hope. Well, I hope you like him, quite frankly, because I, I like him. I mean, there's a lot of effort that went into him. I mean, there's a little you can't really see it under here, but where the chain attaches under there. That uh, just before I actually glued the guns on, that um, that broke off the night before I was I was about to be done making him, and this was the night before I had to take him to a, two nights before I had to take him to a tournament as well. Um, so I must have spent three four hours desperately trying to reattach the uh, the loop that was on there because uh, it just wouldn't stay. And <laughs> yeah, I mean it was a real struggle, but you know I, I'm really happy with how Scumblitz has turned out. I'm absolutely in love with this this guy the way i've done him you know he's, he's i mean my orc army is entirely a uh, fluff based army you know it's all themed and i i mean i personally like to think i've done a fantastic job you know with the evolution of scumblets um but you know please tell me guys what you think of him you know what your opinions are because i'm always interested to see what people think of scumblets um yeah i mean well there's not really much more to say you know that is scumblets he, it, it was a, it was a hell of a build project. It took me all all told, if I built it, if I squeezed all the time together, because I was building them over the course of a, about six months, just collecting all the different kits. Um, I think it must take me about two weeks all told to build. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Again, guys, please, um, please, please, please leave your comments, like the video, subscribe to the channel. You know, 
any any games you want to see, any matchups you'd like to see, if you're in the Oxford area, uh, I'm going to leave my email address in the link below. Please give me a shout uh, if you're interested in a game featuring on the channel. Um, you know, it, I mean, I do this for your lot's pleasure. You know, I love what I love the games, and you know, I like to share with what I do with you lot. And I mean, you know, we'll see more games on the run. I mean, as you can see here, this one needs a bit of TLC, but we got. Uh, I recently acquired a um, a Blood Angels BFG fleet uh, for so yeah that that'll be something Ray will probably end up watching uh, a nice about two thousand point BFG fleet there. I've also got a large Necron fleet. Um, here's I mean the, the start there you can see Nork Deadog over here. That's part of my converted guard army. You'll see what that is when I get it up and running. It's going to look horrible from a distance. Um, yeah, over here we can see some some urban war. These are my Vasa, which I absolutely adore. Vasa are sort of your um, they they they're sort of your, your galactic police sort of thing, really. Uh, they're very fast, very swift. Over here we'll see my Archangel. She needs a bit of a touch up on the paint front. Uh, she's not actually supposed to be like that. She's supposed to be attached to the base. She broke a couple times, and basically she is she's normally attached. By the feet, the tiniest bit on on this back foot, so a bar across the bottom, same as the GW metal ones are, because these are all metal models, and that broke off. So I had to sort of play around with her a little bit and work out how I could um, how I could sort this out. So I thought to myself, well, hold on, the whole concept of our changes, you know, they're sort of they're scout sort of things, you know, they they need to get up close, but they're also quite they have the stealth special, which means they're that little bit harder to hit. And um, and so I thought, well, if I if I have a flying through the air, that's also quite quite cinematic because it's a nice cinematic pose even when on the ground. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I thought, well, if I just sort that out, uh, so I, so I basically just took one of the skimmer stands, uh, drilled into her knee, uh, had to super glue her in because she kept spinning around and around and around. That didn't quite work the way I wanted, but never mind. Uh, we've got my sniper over the back here, uh, who needs a bit more of a touch up. Um, the, the the actual colour scheme of the army itself, the actual colour scheme of the army itself was uh, inspired by the uh, the Winter Soldier because I always wanted and I, and I thought to myself, well, what what do I do? Um, how do I how do I do that? And I thought, well, it, if I go for the Vasa, the Vasa are quite Soviet esque. So I thought, well, if if I um, if I have them in very dark colours to the sort of, to represent them sort of sneaking around, then I thought to myself, well, I want a bit a little bit of fluff for them. And now most are set on the. Um, I think it's Viridian, the, the Viridian, I can't remember, the, uh, Iskandria, Iskandria is the name of the planet, um, that most, the, all urban war is set on, and I thought, well, if I, I mean, it's not implausible that the Vasa have contingencies elsewhere, so I thought, well, if I have them on a, um, the, the, the idea is they're basically, these guys are stationed on a prison world, uh, it's, it's a world that they've made into a prison colony, and, um, and the idea being that basically the prisoners are let loose on this planet to do whatever, and that the Vasa are just there, just sort of keep them in check. So I thought, if I and and then the sort of the fluff behind them is um, basically there. Um, the planet has got a permanent layer of snow above it. Just zoom in so you can see the rest of my Vasa. Uh, I've got a sergeant in there somewhere. I did have a sergeant in there somewhere. Oh, here's my sergeant right up the back. Yeah, there's my sergeant. Shut up. Shh. There we been. Uh, yeah, there's my sergeant there. She, again, she needs a bit of touch up. It's been a while since he's got been pulled out. Um, it's, it's, it's quite a nice model in and of itself. And this was a starter set that Steve and Tom got me for my birthday, and I sort of worked with. I got some more to get, so hopefully you'll see them soon. Uh, but yeah, the, the idea behind them is that it's a um, the, 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 they're on Virinesh Five, which is a, a planet. In a perpetual state of night, uh, it, it's constantly slowing, snowing. It's got such thick cloud coverage; it's just completely dark all year round, all day round. Um, Twenty, yeah, twenty-four-seven, however many days a year this planet happens to be. So obviously they've got very dark colours to uh, to blend in. So they've obviously got the um, can't really see it particularly well there, but the green lenses to uh, yeah, there you go. Just about make it out. The green lens is sort of the night. Gave him a nice sort of bright green to go for the sort of the night vision sort of thing. Sort of look. Um, so yeah, those are my Vasa. Like I say, I will be expanding on them a little bit. And here's just some more of the uh, the neck, the Blood Angels BFG. Uh, again, the this sort of needs a bit of repairing. I've got some that are absolutely fine. 
Um, I mean, yeah, that's... <sighs> Come on, focus. Thank you. Yeah, so that's, you know, that's the crap hole that is my room and... <laughs> I mean, like I say, you, you'll have to excuse um, that. So yeah, yeah, that is Scumblitz uh, up close, you know. Again, please leave your comments below. I'm always interested to see what you think. Uh, like the video, give the channel a subscribe, pass it on to anybody you know who might be interested. Please, guys, you know, your support makes this seem worthwhile. Pass the channel on to any, anybody you know who might be interested, who might want to feature on the channel. You ever want to feature on the channel, comment, subscribe, send me an email. We'll sort some out. Uh, so, thank you very much, and um, happy war gaming, happy gaming in general, whatever it is you're doing, be it console gaming, PC gaming, card games, RPGs, tabletop gaming, the lot, you know, I mean, this is very little of it I don't do, so have fun with that, thank you very much guys, thank you very much for watching.